get out our measuring tape and measure the size that we want and you'll adjust this based on what you like. I want to make a bracelet that goes about from here to down here. Let's go with 13 centimeters. I'm gonna measure out a piece of tape that is 13 centimeters in length. I'm just placing that on the table for now. I'm not gonna use it right away. We're gonna use it in a second. There are two more measurements you're gonna need. The first one is the circumference of the thinnest place for your wrist and again get my tape out putting that next to the first one and keep in mind which tape is which and then the third piece is the circumference let's go down what did I say 13 for the bottom of the bracelet so the thicker part again with the tape and the final piece of tape that I'm gonna cut is one that matches the first one which again is 13 centimeters in length because we do need two sides for the bracelet. The next step is to place these four pieces of tape to make up the shape for the bracelet when it is flattened. We'll roll it up later, but at first it's gonna be just a big flat piece. And liquid latex shrinks a little bit when it dries. Just keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna start placing my tape pieces now and I'm gonna use these to create a sort of fence for the liquid latex to stay inside of once we start pouring it. I'm placing the largest tape piece first, and that is the one for the bottom, like the bottom circumference. So just placing that, like a third of it, and then creating a little wall. And then I'm gonna measure out 13 centimeters on my measuring tape lay that out on the side here and then I'm gonna place the top circumference piece of tape and then I'm using the measuring tape here to see how high up it should go so right about here I think is good There we go, we now have two out of the four walls. And then just taking the first out of the last two pieces, which are the length measurement pieces, and placing those along the sides here. There we go. All that remains now is just securing these open edges here. So I'm just gonna cut out four little pieces of tape to close those up. All right, we now have our little mold for the bracelet. Before we get starting on pouring that latex in there, which I think is gonna be the most fun part, we're actually going to get out the clay and we're going to create little round dots of clay that are going to be placed along the sides, both sides of the bracelet, so that once we roll it up, we can pull the band through and close the bracelet that way. So the clay will just act as a little guard, so to speak. I'm gonna put one right there. And then once the latex has dried, we can remove the clay and you'll have nice little even holes in the latex. All 
All right, let's get pouring on that latex. That's enough. And you can sort of tilt the tray to make sure that it goes into all the crevices. The latex has been resting for about three hours now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingers to roughen up the surface a little bit because it looks a little too perfect now. So I'm basically just gonna, yeah, just kind of dab it. It's like pudding right now. Just tear it up a little bit. And then I'm just gonna leave that overnight so that it hardens fully. The latex has now had a chance to dry overnight. So it has gone almost completely clear. So what we're gonna do now is remove it from the mold. And before we can do that, we're gonna get out the powder and powder all the surfaces of the latex because the latex sticks to itself. So you can ruin your piece if you accidentally stick two of the ends together because it's damn near impossible to get them separate again. So just powder all over. And then as I start on loosening the edges, I'm gonna keep the powder brush handy and powder underneath as I loosen it. And don't forget about the edges too. Everything needs to be powdered. Here it is. So now comes the other fun part and that is airbrushing or painting this. No matter if you're using airbrushing makeup or palette makeup, the reason why we're using alcohol activated makeup is because that is what one uses for prosthetics. We're gonna be using isopropyl alcohol today, which is 97% or something like that. Isopropyl alcohol is not permanent for life, but it is the most long lasting product there is when it comes to makeup. So I'm gonna start by airbrushing a little bit and I actually thought I'd start by doing the inside because the outside is what's gonna show the most. So I wanna do that last to make sure that I get that right. And the uh, kit that I'm mainly gonna be using today is by Tim2. Here we go. And something is stuck and that's clogged. Ugh, my airbrush guns. Which means I'm gonna be using the Tim2 Pro Dura palette instead. So I'm just gonna take my little spray bottle of isopropyl alcohol and spray in there a couple times to activate the color. And then I'm just gonna use a big foundation brush and then just kind of put that all over. Like I said, this is for the inside of the bracelet. So perfection is not necessary here. I do want it to be red though, so that it looks like lead. Don't forget the edges. All right, it's now red, so I'm gonna leave it to dry and then flip it over and do the fun side, the detail side. All right, time to start painting the other side. And I don't actually have any alcohol-based foundation shades right now, so I'm gonna have to mix myself. And I think it's gonna be easiest just to do like a base coat with the brush, the way that I did with the red for the other side. So I'm gonna use some orange, some white. Start off like that. I have a sponge that I've used for other stuff that I'm just placing inside some paper and then I'll just like kind of dab that. So I'm getting out a small detail brush and I'm going to go into the red starting with the holes and then I'm going to dip the red in some black and then like go into the crevices. You know what? I think that's enough. We're gonna let this dry and then add the band and then dry it on. All right, it has dried now. And even though, I just wanna point out that even though alcohol activated makeup is the most long lasting, that's why we use it for prosthetics, 
it still can rub off and especially if you do drink a bunch of alcohol and like spill it on it or like scratch it but with this kind of design it doesn't really matter because the look of it is to be worn and torn and flesh so let's do the final step now and that is adding the band and i'm going to be using a satin band which is 12 millimeters thick i'm using a black one if you have some difficulties getting the band through the holes you can just use a safety pin or something like that i'm just getting a lighter this will keep the edges clean I close them up and there we have it the bracelet is done let's try it on the absolutely easiest to put on if you have somebody to help you tie it and I am by myself right now so I can't actually do that properly but yeah here it is on nice and gross and awesome and kind of hilarious <laughs> All right, sloppy little bow, but there it is on. Boom. If you wanna make this even more effectful, you can obviously put a bunch of blood on your arm underneath. But yeah, that is the finished bracelet. I hope you guys enjoy this fun, gory DIY. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.